Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Let's talk about Homo floresiensis and the theory or some of the, the reasons why uh, scientists think that they might have shrunk and the time frame in which that they did. And so this article is called uh, Fast Evolution Explains the Tiny Stature of Extinct Hobbit from Flores Island. And so really quick, uh, Homo floresiensis was discovered in this island along the uh, Java called Flores Island, which is here, part of Indonesia. And it was discovered in this cave called Liang Bu, Liang Bua Cave, which is somewhere in this part of the island here. So a couple interesting things about this region. One, it's part of um, the Sunda Shelf. So back in the last ice age, this was all one continuous landmass, and you can kind of make it out on uh, the satellite image. And if you zoom out even more, the theory is that Homo erectus, which was very widespread at the time, or throughout history, the past two million years or, or, or thereabouts, prevailing theory is that Flores Sciences branched off from them some time ago but somewhere around there, and then they became uh, hobbits. Uh, this is a prevailing theory. This article, though, is very interesting because it posits a few uh, interesting tidbits of the implications of how the hobbits became uh, what they were. So one of the hobbits that they found had a really small brain. It was about three feet tall. The thing was, uh, yeah, maybe they weren't as suited to survive as we were but they did survive and they were able to pass on their genes and so um, their genetics uh, enabled them to do so and when they were first uh, uncovered when they when they were first discovered a lot of scientists were quick to reject them as a, a, a legitimate species of homo rather they thought they were just an abnormal version of homo sapiens just some sort of uh, aberration in the genetic uh, uh, lineage. They've come out with some new dates. So one of the dates from the Liang Bua individual who happened to be a woman lived between 60,000 and 90,000 years ago. Now that's a pretty big window of 30,000 years. But again, that really in the scope of, even in the scope of uh, humanity, that's not that much of a long time considering that Homo erectus and one, probably an even older uh, species of Homo uh, that predates Homo erectus probably goes out at most 2.6 million years ago at most so yeah 60,000 to 90,000 years ago is a drop in the bucket I did an article uh, about Luzon Homo luzonensis which is again this small type of uh, offshoot of, of Homo sapiens or, or uh, of the genus Homo so, and again, it's on this island. So it's very interesting that this is the second uh, dwarf, quote, dwarf species that we find. So that begs the question, why did tiny humans wind up living on these islands? And in order to answer this, we, we have to talk about the island rule. So zoologist J. Bristol Foster proposed the island rule back in the 60s. He noted that when a large bodied species a species settled onto the island, it will tend to evolve to shrink in size, all the way to the point of leaving dwarf descendants. At the same time, the opposite will happen. Small bodied species will evolve to be larger, producing gigantic daughter species. So um, there are a bunch of different examples of this. Pygmy elephants, pygmy mammoths in Baja California islands in the Mediterranean, um, rats as big as a cow in the Caribbean and insects as long as a human hand in New Zealand are just a few examples um, and there are a few proposed mechanisms for this a few theories about this that could be uh, responsible for this trend um, one is the absence of natural predators on the island so that means larger species that are continental such as elephants and hippos when they make their way to an island um, they tend to fend off predators because of their size. That, that's why they, they evolved to be big, is to fend off uh, uh, would-be predators. Um, and when it comes to calories, when it comes to uh, energy, it's an expensive strategy when there's no predators anymore. So I guess somewhere along the genetic line, 
after a few generations of these new these elephants that come to the island that part of the genes kind of switch off it, they don't need to be big anymore and for some reason whether it be mutation or whatever that just happens so there's some sort of genetic memory some sort of genetic consciousness that is implied from just what happens after a few generations so it seems to be this weird awareness that this body awareness whatever you want to call it um that tends to switch on and off depending on uh the environment so on the flip side scarce resource supply might favor a smaller body size because smaller individuals can live with less and um again smaller individuals with no predators just produce more offspring uh females start uh, delivering earlier at a smaller size because there's a less time for a gestation period investing again less growth less energy in and more in reproduction so again this explains how contemporary human pygmies evolved because if regular sized humans came from the continents and lived on the islands or if they had in this case if they were living here and then things flooded and it became an island and they became trapped on the island that could be a scenario as well this is how this is the proposed theory that they uh sh this is how they shrunk now this is a very highly controversial theory i'm not saying it either way i'm just trying to explain the idea of island uh uh the island effect because it's very important to understand uh the theory the larger theory uh that this article talks about so um all these options eventually lead to changes in the genetic architecture that underlies body size variation and that's the key body size variation tends to change because of these these environmental changes um so could the island rule be an explanation for the small size of uh these two species of homo here uh the hobbit people and they're leaning toward yes uh because of that, that theory you can see that theory with other animals so why wouldn't it work with humans um some people think that's too much of an assumption but it it, it does make sense because it, it's being reproduced in nature although not with humans we there's no proof of that but there is proof of other mammals and insects that it, that happens with and even fish um so the hobbit's most likely ancestor is homo erectus we talked about that um it seems evolution in the new species must have occurred less than about 300,000 years ago. So uh, this is based on the geological history of Flores, um, this area again, and the oldest known fo fossils of Flores sciences. Um, so the, the, to understand uh, this part of the article, you need to understand uh, Darwinian evolution, which is again, it's described as a slow and gradual process um so it's 300,000 years long enough for homo erectus to come to an island and and morph into uh this this dwarf like homo floresiensis is this even possible and this is what's being explored um and could this drastic change in body size and brain size happen this fast so they decide they divide the uh, they developed a computer model to try to uh, figure this out um, it simulates body size evolution under biologically and ecologically realistic scenarios now again keep the before we even go any further keep in mind that this is an algorithm that this is an AI, uh some sort of ai algorithm um so it's it's highly controversial who knows if um, how accurate this is but according to the article it's there the computers are able to analyze exponentially faster than even the most um, highly trained and um, highly experienced experts in the field and also uh, there's it has more of an accuracy uh, I, I don't know um, how I'm not a I'm not an engineer I'm not a computer scientist or anything like that so it could be bullshit. I don't know. It, those could be exaggerated numbers. But I I see in a lot of articles that this is being utilized and successfully utilized to uh, mostly make predictions 
and uh, give humans the idea of, um, and scientists obviously, the uh, some sort of uh, parallel idea that could give them another source of knowledge to make a better model for the future. So individuals colonize island, grow to their adult body size according to how much food is available, give birth to a number of young, and die. Um, the basic rule of this quote game is that the individuals are closer to the optimum body size for the island and that moment will leave more descendants. So offspring inherit genes for large or small body size. And again, this is just all, this is what's um, put in because this is what closely resembles actual uh, reality. So generation after generation, new mutations may appear in the population. So this is a big one too. Mutations are a huge mystery. Uh, we call them mutations, but we don't know why they happened. Um, first, the, the proposed thought was it's just completely random. But now, as we look deeper and deeper into mutations, it seems like they're triggered by something. Um, I don't think random mutations happen. I think there, there has to be some sort of uh, circumstance that's met for some sort of biological trigger to happen. And then it ha the, the most interesting thing is, though, it happens retroactively, meaning it doesn't happen to the parents living. It happens to maybe the generation after their offspring or, the, or a few generations down the line. So again, this idea of genetic mem memory comes into play. Um, uh, occasionally, new individuals might in invade the island and mix with the residents, so they added that into the algorithm as well. Another basic rule is that the initial small population cannot grow above the number of islands resources might sustain. Um, so these uh, Earth system scientists use this uh, paleoclimatic data to tweak the model as well. So hotter and water times support more people on the island. Um, and then they start running the simulation after putting all these parameters in there. Um, so they, again, they, they assume that the large bodied Homo erectus arrived at the island and then evolved into smaller species there. So they, want, they wanted to say how long that would take. How many generations would that take? They ran the model a thousand times or more than a thousand times, thousands of times, each time using a random combination of all the parameters. Um, they were able to build a statistical distribution of how long it took for Homo erectus to become as small as Homo floresiensis. So after 10,000 simulations, it took less than 350 generations for the process to complete. That's about 10,000 years, give or take. Um, it, if a young female delivers a baby at the average age of 15, that's about 10,000 years. That's, 300, that's what 350 generations is. If you want to be more generous, then maybe 15,000 years. So this, in other words, let's say just for all intents and purposes for this um, uh, example, Homo erectus is living in this part of the map here. Let's just say they were living in Cambodia and then um, they traveled to, for whatever reason, they traveled to this island here 15,000 years ago, let's say. Um, or let's just say, at, at, let's have a nice number 10,000 years ago, right at the end of the Younger Dryas, let's just say that. They become stranded here, and it becomes an island. From then until now, they would have shrunk, according to these, um, like almost indistinguishable, basically. They would have become a new species in less than 350 generations, according to these uh, computer simulations. Um, so again, this, is, this translates to a little more than a thousandth of homo evolutionary history so again um this is a very interesting thought because this is this would have never been um conceived of prior to these algorithms so um the again darwin darwinian theory is a very slow process that should take millions of years but this according to uh the simulations and this new data um that's not the case at all so it's highly controversial again. Um, the, the simulation still shows 300,000 years is far more than enough time for a new human species to arise. So um, 10,000 years is really fast, but if you have a window of 300,000 years, that seems more likely. Um, so this, the, their work supports the idea that fast evolution is quite plausible under a realistic set of ecological parameters. And the natural selection may be a powerful force influencing body size on islands. And if Homo floresiensis is indeed a product of the island rule, 
Uh, it, sh it shows yet again that we humans tend to obey the same overall rules driving evolution in many other animals. So a lot of people, um, a lot of, a lot of people from different backgrounds think that humans are the one exception, um, because again, if you look at like ancient texts, we were created in God's image. Uh, we were put here. We didn't evolve from from primates or anything like that. So these Darwinian rules don't really apply to us. That's one perspective. Um, but if you come from the other, a different perspective, which is uh, we, we're all mammals, we all have hearts, we all have uh, or internal organs and all these things. Um, if you take a group of modern people on an island and leave them there for 10,000 years, Odds are that they're going to be indistinguishable from, from the first generation compared to generation 350. Uh, that's what this is saying. So um, we won't really know for sure until we conduct that type of research. But for now, um, we, we only have this uh, computer algorithm and theories. But I still think it's an interesting uh, conversation. Um, I don't believe it one way or another. I just think it's a, it's a good thing to think about. And it's a good... Um, it's a good resource to have in our back pocket just in case we need to refer back to it if we find something else, which we will, um, in the archaeological record or if we find some sort of another offshoot of humanity and then we can study that and then maybe we can back engineer the, the, the genome and see where those genes came from and all that stuff. Anyway, um, I've been going on pretty long. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this, about the sped up version of evolution and whether you think Homo erectus could turn into Homo floresiensis in, in 300,000 years, if you think that's possible, or if you think it's all bunk and it requires millions of years, or if you don't even think Homo erectus and Flores are the same, um, let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, I'll have an episode hopefully tomorrow or Monday uh, uh, talking more about Denny Sylvans and Neanderthals and Melanesians. Uh, there's a cool article about that. Uh, anyway, leave a comment and I'll talk to you guys later.